Welcome, Marie here in Zone 6, and I want to talk about garden maintenance, including watering, pruning, feeding, and hydrangea care. Starting with the hydrangeas, I provide natural food in late winter or early spring for my hydrangeas in the front as well as the back. So that would include, of course, these Incredibles, as well as the limelights. The perennials in the front, which include the Millennium Allium and the May Night I've cut back, as well as the Catmint Nepeta, I don't provide them with any natural food, so they're on their own. So that would include the perennial hibiscus, hardy hibiscus I have over here. When it goes dormant, I cut it down low near the ground. Otherwise, it's on its own. And this Rose of Sharon, because it blooms on new wood, I do prune it around spring, just a little bit. I don't even think 30%. Late winter or early spring, I prune my limelights as well as my smooth hydrangeas. It's good not to prune more than about one third of the plant. I think that's standard for a healthy prune. And I try to prune to a point of growth, whether that be a bud or where the plant is branching, some point of growth. I try to prune just above it. In the early spring or late winter, I sprinkle the organic food below the hydrangeas. I don't even rake it in. I let the rain do the rest. Smooth Hydrangea Arborescence as well as Panicle Hydrangea Paniculata bloom on new wood, which means that the current year's growth will get blooms. So you don't need to protect the buds. In the West Garden, which is the back garden, these Arborvitae, which have been in containers for about six years, I am really good at watering those containers to keep them healthy and happy. As far as my annuals, when I first plant my annuals in the spring, I'm full of vigor and vim. So I give them a water soluble food probably every week to 10 days. And as the growing season progresses and I get tired, they get less food. I'll just be honest. The Super Tunia Snowdrift you see here and in the front bed as well as the Bordeaux Petunia and the Pink Bubblegum Petunia as well as the Silverberry Supertunia are self-cleaning so they do not have to be deadheaded. What a relief. The Beacon Impatience as well, there's one in this container, do not have to be deadheaded either. On the other hand, the wave petunias on the back deck perform best when they are deadheaded. And I like to get not just the bloom when I deadhead, but my goal is to get some of the stem as well. There's one wave petunia. There's another. And another. Always keep in mind that flowers in containers can dry out very quickly, so it's important to stay on top of the watering. As far as the Macrophylla hydrangea, or Big Leaf hydrangea, or Garden hydrangea, or I think it's called Hortensia as well, all of those are the same plant, Big Leaf hydrangea. This is Endless Summer, and it is a re-bloomer. So some of the older varieties don't rebloom, but this one actually does. And this is a new set of blooms that it is getting right now. The older blooms that were survived on the old wood from last year, they're buried in there, are below. And what you really need to keep in mind with these hydrangeas is that 
many of the blooms will be on the old wood. So that means that after the hydrangea starts to fade, the, the, the flowers start to fade, it's going to start to set new buds that will bloom next year. So you want to be very careful not to prune off those buds that are for next year. And in the case of this in the summer, if I were to prune them all off, that means early in the, well, about somewhere in June, it usually blooms. I wouldn't have those blooms. I'd have to wait until around now, which is August, for this next set of blooms. So be very cautious when pruning your big leaf hydrangea. And no matter what hydrangea you have, if there is damaged, dead, or diseased parts to the plant, be more than, you're more than welcome to trim those off. That's dead, damaged, or diseased. Consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.